So is the Tesla thesis dead? Is it time to sell Tesla stock? Because after all, the stock has performed absolutely miserably in just the last few weeks here, dropping nearly, if not more than 25% at this point. And the thesis must obviously be dead because the stock market is telling us that, well, stock goes down, so company must be bad, right? Well, in this video, we're going to do a little bit of talking about autos and we're going to determine, is Tesla still a stock to hold on to? And has my thesis changed? with the latest price movements. Well, let's talk, especially since you never know what I'm gonna do, since after all, I'm a crazy flip-flopper. Unless, of course, you're a course member and you've signed up via the link down below with that expiring coupon code, which does officially finally expire Friday, since we are ready to launch our new product. All right, folks, here we go. So in my opinion, in order for us to be able to talk about Tesla, we also need to be able to talk about Ford and GM. And UBS came out with some pretty intense papers this morning telling us what some of the major risks in the auto industry are. And the reason we're gonna talk about those is because we have to align those obviously with what we think regarding Tesla. Now, UBS went as far as downgrading Ford to a sell uh, th this morning, actually. They mentioned that Ford ranks behind GM in their views, and they believe that in the event of a likely recession, that they're basically going to see their margins go down to break evens, with their total margin dropping in half to just 3.6% and on that basis their free cash flow falling to around break even levels they actually don't think that when ford separates the electric vehicle business from the legacy business they'll get anything other than a little bit more transparency and they think gm is much further ahead with the ultium based batteries mostly because gm is actually producing their own batteries in many different locations so ubs believes that ford has one of the least attractive risk toward uh, reward profiles and they've already been warning on high supplier costs, unfinished trucks. I mean, there are pictures on like Reddit or whatever of Fords sitting in lots, thousands of them. And they're just not getting out to customers or dealerships because they still don't have the chips they need, which is weird because the chip sector is actually getting destroyed right now. Oh, DRAM prices, everything's just plummeting in the chip sector. But the thing is, we're still missing certain chips like the ones that we need for autos so at the same time as you have like this chip overflow for things like crypto you have uh, this undersupply of things that you need for like cars so you've got this really really remarkable disaster going on uh, in the chip world and uh, they also talk about here will ford be potentially a leading uh, uh legacy you know company in the way of transitioning to ev and they actually think uh, not likely they actually think that gm and tesla because they've localized their battery supply chains are likely to be ahead so this is really interesting so they're basically bagging on ford saying look ford has supply chain issues and margin issues mostly in part because well a they have supply chain issues because of the chip crisis but uh, b they they don't have that localized battery production and they just can't get their margins right in fact on the ford mach e their ceo famously came out and said look we, we're not making money on this thing we're losing money on the the mach e's because of the supply chain crisis and they weren't able to raise prices enough to offset those declines but ubs wasn't all thrills about gm either in fact, they think that while GM's continue is, is likely to continue to have momentum, they think the overall auto sector, and this is bad, in 2023 is deteriorating fast. So demand destruction seems inevitable at a time when supply is improving. And they think we're going to see a massive paradigm shift in autos where we go from undersupply to oversupply. And consequently, we're going to see margins and prices come down substantially. As a result, at GM, they expect uh, earnings per share also to drop by half. This is despite the fact that margins have already led the company to lose somewhere around 40% of their share value year to date. Now, that's pretty remarkable because when you when you think about that, that's like saying, uh, you know, hey, like Michael Burry said, look, first phase is we see uh, multiples come down, right? Multiple compression. So GM collapses 40%, right? The next phase is, hey, well, earnings are now lower. Well, if earnings go down and multiples are lower, you have even more pain for the stock. Now, no guarantees because then you get Goldman Sachs clapping back and saying, hey, usually we see the bottom of the stock market about six months before the bottom of the earnings recession, but we'll see. So one of the things that we have to keep in mind now is production, right? So we're worried about this potential move from undersupply to oversupply. How does that compare to, uh, let's say, Tesla, right? Well, you have to keep this in mind. So GM produces around uh, 6.8 million vehicles per year. 
and Ford produces somewhere around 4.2 million vehicles per year. These are really, really big numbers. Tesla on an annualized basis right now is maybe producing about 1.4 million vehicles per year. So the beauty about Tesla's actually low production right now is hopefully as you go into a period of oversupply for vehicles, you still have substantially more demand for Teslas because they're still underproduced relative to what car companies like Toyota or GM or Ford are producing. But it's very crystal clear here that Wall Street thinks we're about to go into a really nasty time for auto production. Now, they do think that the uh, GM Ultium based model is going to be a big push for, for batteries and going to be a big, uh, you know, big factor. They also like GM Cruise. That's their sort of self-driving division, but they don't actually see any kind of near term benefit to uh, their GM Cruise robo taxi. And they think that ultimately GM is second to Tesla. In, uh, in, in basically margins and being an EV dominant company, right? So you've got this sort of ranking here where if you're just looking at these three companies, you've got very, very little shade being thrown on Tesla and a lot being thrown on like the legacies, the Ford and the GMs. In fact, Bloomberg went as far as summarizing it like this. For electric vehicle maker Tesla, whose third quarter deliveries failed to match up to expectations, we'll talk about that in just a moment, both UBS and RBC analysts struck a more benign note UBS sees Elon Musk's led company continuing its aggressive growth through cutting prices and leveraging costs, while RBC said it's very well positioned midterm as the low cost EV provider. And folks, this is where we get to some of the most important things that we have to consider about Tesla. The most important things for Tesla are will the cars sell? Okay, well, the last quarter was the first quarter that we've actually seen a substantial difference in the amount of vehicles produced and delivered. We used to produce a certain amount of vehicles, and we actually used to deliver more vehicles than we produced. So for example, we were sitting around for the last like two years, we've been sitting around somewhere around 101% when you divide those. That means we're delivering more vehicles than we're producing. Uh, and that's just because of quarter by quarter how things work. You pile up some cars and then you've always had more vehicles to deliver than you've actually produced in the next quarter, and that's always rolled forward. But that changed in this last earnings report. We missed by like 5%. That means there's a 5% gap between how many vehicles were produced and delivered. And that's leading to these massive heart palpitations on Wall Street of people going, dude, demand for Tesla is over. It's absolutely over. Now, Tesla argues, no, the demand is not over. In fact, we just had logistical problems in the nature of we're delivering 50% more vehicles than we ever have before in a quarter. And we just don't have the connections that we need right now to make sure that we get the, uh, the best pricing on transportation from where we produce them to our delivery stations, right? Because you need to transport these on vehicle transporting trucks, semi trucks that transport vehicles, right? Now, what is making some people nervous here, though, is if you actually go to Tesla.com, all you have to do, oh, oops, uh, I turned, put this on airplane mode. Anyway, you go to Tesla.com and you click on existing inventory, right? If you do that, take a look what you get right here. You get a bunch of Teslas around, let's say, San Diego, Los Angeles, Orange County. So it's showing me in many different areas. But you're actually getting new Teslas here with less than 50 miles on the odometer. And they're showing as existing inventory coming soon to Los Angeles for local delivery. So I personally am wondering, are these cancellations? They probably are. Uh, are these going to get snatched up? Or are they going to pile up, right? And so that's potentially a leading indicator that we can watch. We have not actually seen that before. And so even though I believe, look, all right, Maybe Tesla's right. Maybe we did have logistical issues on deliveries at the end of the quarter. And we're still going to be able to deliver all of the vehicles. As long as we can deliver all of the vehicles we produce, Tesla's going to be a golden child over the next two years. I believe no guarantees, okay? But I believe they will be a strong golden child over the next few years because people are going to look and go, geez, man, their earnings are still going up. Their EPS is growing by uh, a 30 to 50% clip. This is an amazing company. Everybody else is suffering. As long as Tesla actually is able to sell their cars. And remember, Tesla skews to a higher income individual. Uh, the the I, I want to say the, the median income of somebody who's a Tesla driver is somewhere in the neighborhood of one hundred thirty to one hundred forty thousand dollars. That's compared to like a GM or Ford driver, where the median income is closer to sixty thousand dollars. So you've got this huge delta in incomes, and that higher income cohort spends through a recession. Now, eventually they begin to spend less. And I've also been an advocate of don't buy a new freaking car right now. Okay, buy the stock, not the car. That hasn't worked out great over the last year, I understand. But I do think in the long term, it will always work out way better. So we've got this potential 
crisis that Wall Street sees of, uh oh, you've got a pile up of new vehicles on their website. A pile up, there are a few of them. But anyway, you've got vehicles showing up on their website that haven't been showing up before. A. Two, you've got some excuse about not having enough delivery trucks at the end of last quarter. And three, if Tesla's growth story goes away, the stock will plummet. It will absolutely plummet. It's just going to go to like $100. It's going to be terrible. And I believe that those three things are leading to a lot of fear on Wall Street right now, where people are like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. That, combined with the fact that we're starting to see some levels of retail capitulation, and Tesla's a really strongly held retail stock, well, crap, you know, no surprise things are going down. You start seeing pain on Wall Street, Tesla falling a lot, now people lose their, uh, their, their faith in Tesla's ability to deliver vehicles. It's a heavily held retail stock. Retail starts capitulating. T retail sells their biggest stock, probably Tesla. Well, so Tesla goes down even more. Add to all of this garbage, Elon Musk and the stupid Twitter debacle. If he loses his, his uh, equity partners, he's going to have to sell more Tesla stock after earnings. Uh, unless he has a 10B51 plan and he was able to sell before, he's going to have to sell more Tesla to be able to finance the stupid purchase of Twitter, which he's overpaying for by, the fa by a factor of two. It's all a disaster, right? But what's remarkable is if we take everything that I just said and we break it down and we look at Tesla as a company and we say, does ultimately, like five years down the road, does Twitter affect Tesla? No. Ultimately, does retail capitulating today affect Tesla in five years? No. And as long as, and this is the most critical thing, as long as Tesla can still sell all of the vehicles they produce, they're going to recover gloriously. So this is where I've put together a few scenarios, and the scenarios vary in intensity here. So the first scenario, I'm going to go with the worst scenario, and this is we get down to $45,000 average selling price for Teslas, and we produce only $3.2 million. That's down from the $4.9 million. This would be kind of bad. That's, almost, that's like a really big reduction in how many vehicles we think we can produce and sell. This is like a really bearish scenario, in my opinion. So average selling price for my prior spreadsheets going from $52K to $45. Vehicles sold in 2025 going from 4.9 to just 3.2, okay? That would still be way less than what GM and, and Ford produce, right? But anyway, if that were the case, with no other icing on the cake, like semis or insurance or whatever else, and a margin of uh, somewhere around a 31% margin still on these, uh, these, these vehicles, expense margin is 69%, but that average selling price going down uh, and the quantity going down, Tesla might only be uh, a three hundred nineteen dollar stock in the future, which from two twenty would really only represent a compounded annual return of about ten percent. This is like really, really bearish in my opinion, and it's kind of sad because we've been at nine, like nine sixty, basically pre-split pricing, not that long ago. Like crazy, right? This would be this is like in my opinion one of your worst case scenarios because it really would represent growth in vehicle production plummeting to like twenty five to thirty percent growth per year. I don't know how that would be possible uh, with Austin the Shanghai expansion uh, and, and Giga Berlin ramping. I, I, I just don't see that. Uh, but I think that would be a very bearish scenario. Here's another potential scenario, and that's we stay at an average selling price of about 50,000, and we keep the number of vehicles at 4.9 million, uh, but margin collapses by about 3%. So we're, we're only at a 28% profit margin, that top number there on the right. That's right here. Uh, in this scenario, you're uh, potentially looking at a 4 50 price target by the end of 2025 that represent a 20 percent nearly 20 percent annual compounded rate of return right and then if i go to the last scenario here this is just still the bull scenario okay we're going to reduce the average selling price by 50 uh, to by 2000 to 50,000. still 4.9 vehicles 4.9 million vehicles but we keep margin high this is our best case scenario where we sell all the vehicles we can and we keep margin high. You'll be sitting at a 25% compounded annual rate of return investing in Tesla at 220 uh, and, and then potentially getting to 546. And this is not including any potential euphoria that could come to the stock when during the earnings crisis we're like, oh my gosh, this is the one surviving company that isn't getting reamed on EPS. It's EPS Asia is actually still growing the way we expected it to. So uh, what's my take? Well, bottom line, my take is I'm a buyer. Uh, you know, I believe that the Twitter FUD is Twitter FUD. It creates fear, uncertainty, and doubt that Elon's going to create selling pressure. You create temporary selling pressure and a lack of liquidity uh, in the market because everybody's short on cash. What happens? The price goes down. It's just the way it is. What happens when Wall Street's like, oh my gosh, this is a bad omen for, for uh, Tesla's demand in the future? Well, of course, the stock's going to go down. Like, the stock going down right now is, is happening, in, in my opinion, because of an incredibly logical explanation. <sighs> but it's still painful. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.